Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dota Underlords podcast episode. God knows what. Suns fan here with Zeno. We got Swim in the house. It has been quite a while, friends. How are you doing? Either of you, please. I was, don't, don't well, I was waiting it. for Zeno, Cole. I don't want to be rude. Zeno, how Man, are you doing? I thought you were going to jump in, but I, I'm doing all right. I, I just voted today in the Canadian elections. Go, go non-conservatives. Oh. And uh, my my house is like two thirds packed up right now because we're moving at the the end of the month. Bought a bought a house, and mm. yeah, excited to play some Underlords again. It's been a little while for me. Yeah, swim. How about you, buddy? I've been I've been doing well. You know, I'm just chilling, like uh, having having a good time, just normal uh, existence. Wow, that's very very interesting to hear. Wow. I'm a pretty boring guy, Suns fan. You and me. I think uh, just just chilling anyway. is like a good description of the the state of uh, us and, and underlords right now. But that's that's about to change. Oh, that's so. about to change. Before we get started with this huge patch uh, that uh, is yet to come out, I thought I had this a good will with her, probably be the last time that we all three of us are lords. By the way, because I don't think I have it in my system to do that again, <laughs> to grind right. as much as I did. I think you might you might get the the urge let's back. Let's just let's just cherish this moment together. I Swim don't. is obviously going to get to Lord again. Zeno yeah. and I we'll see. It just depends how much time we put in, but ah, it feels good. Finally, a really reputable podcast. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was so excited uh, after the last one. I'm like, all right, I got to grind out to Lord. I had a kind of yeah, I had a rough rough start, but but I got it. We're ready to do the next cast, and then here we are, over a month later. And yes. I don't care anymore. But uh, I thought I was going to get a second <laughs> account to Lord just to be like, aha, Shannon, I have two. But then I stopped caring about that too. So good. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, Let's that's great to hear. Upcoming patch. Yeah. So I I thought it would be best to go through each day that has been talked about so far. Um, which I can show the in-game now for everybody that's watching, at least. If you're listening on our the great podcast apps out there, then obviously you will have to listen along. Uh, but this is some giant-ass stuff that's going to be changed. The first couple are going to be hero-related, then we'll talk about some juicy stuff to come. The actual patch, we don't know when it's coming out, right? It kind of seems like they're ramping up to this week, but uh, I don't know that for sure. So maybe you might have some so, more actual info. Well, I mean, if I had anything to say, I couldn't say it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> I, I will say that I think it's it's pretty much got to be this week. They said, you know, they're going to be giving info for the next few days. My guess is Thursday. I mean, they said just in the uh, new uh, announcement today, which I was also on the about the duos mode. Um, they said, you know, next few days is is when they'll be giving info. So. Yeah. Sounds like a good guess. Thursday is a normal day as well, so we'll have to wait and see. I mean, that's the big Apple uh, iOS. What do they call their stupid store? I really hate Apple, by the way, but that's a whole side story. It's something about they only accept on Thursdays, I believe. Something weird like that. Uh, oh, so that's why all the patches it? have been on Thursdays. Yeah, huh. that's to my understanding. That Mm. Could be bullshitting. All right, let's get started. The first day, the big update preview, day one, New Heroes and Alliances, part one. The big update is shipping soon, and we... Okay, we don't need to read all of this. So introducing <laughs> the Healer Alliance and Dazzle. First of all, before we get started, what happened to Enchantress's face? Can anybody yeah, talk right? about this a little bit? She looks like a child. There's some weird faces on this, actually. I think uh, CM had kind of a, a strange face going on, too. So Really? Okay, we'll get to yeah, that she soon, looks pretty horse-faced. She looks like she had major plastic surgery on Enchantress's face. Like her but, cheeks yeah, are just I mean, spread. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, know, I know precisely, precisely what you mean, Buzz fan. <laughs> Oops. Okay, no, so... No, I'm... Listen, I'm all, I'm all about that Enchantress, dude. <laughs> the healer class, uh, the healer alliance, all friendly healing is amplified. Uh, Enchantress Dazzle, which we'll get to shortly, and Necker will be part of this alliance so they don't give any actual details on how this healing works but like in terms of percentages or whatnot what do you guys think of just this without looking forward uh it looks like a pretty strong early game alliance to complete you know these are pretty like early heroes like enchantress uh warlock um and you're probably going to complete this in knights as well because omni knight's a healer uh dazzle's oh, yeah. a healer and necro ah. is a healer Oh, there's a dog mistake. in the background. I'll, 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 this is I'll a professional podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Healer Alliance, too. 
I should have mentioned, yeah, I, I was I did not look at the actual icon. So it's Enchantress, Warlock, Dazzle, Omni Knight, and Necro. So five healers. Question is what's happening to their other alliances? Uh might find out about that shortly. So Ooh. Okay. So yeah, I think also yes. like I'm kinda curious to see how it'll play out with things like um like lifesteal and stuff like that, if that also applies. Mm-hmm. But you know, other than that, it seems pretty straightforward. And then Dazzle himself, of course, is a brand new hero. He was in Auto Chess, and he had the Shallow Grave ability. But in this one, he's a Tier 2 unit, and he has Shadow Wave. He's a troll healer as well, which the troll, the most important. Oh, God, it's going to make it so much easier to actually get four trolls now. Uh, Dazzle sends out a bolt of power that arcs between allies, healing them while damaging any nearby enemies. So sounds pretty much exactly like Shadow Wave from Dota. Of course, we don't know the actual numbers yet. So... Sounds good. Yeah. I like it. One thing I'll be curious about will be, um, like, I know they kind of mess around with uh, damage types in this, but obviously in Dota, uh, Shadow Wave's physical. So uh, curious to see if that'll be anything That's there true. or not. But Yeah, they do like to change that stuff randomly. Okay. And my game. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we have insects, my friend. Insects, the thing that everyone has been discussing since the game came out. Will the, even in auto chess, will they put insects in? I think there were some weird names put out there as well, just bugs, insects, and I think there was some weird one that I crawlers. 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 There was another crawlers one like, would be like I think that's the best underlords like nomenclature fit out of all of those. Honestly, that's true. That's a good well, point. I mean, a the, weird. He, well, here's the thing. I mean, to be honest, these aren't even insects. It's like there's spiders. <laughs> Yeah, I think Nyx is an insect. I think I, I do remember from my Dota days counting Nyx's legs, and Nyx, I believe, had six legs, but I mean, he, these aren't insects. So yeah. it turns out we're we're ruining high school biology or whatever. I feel like they, they might change this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an easy change. But anyway, insects for now. We got Nyx Assassin, Nerubian Weaver, which I'm going to use the old school name for, Sand King, and Broodmother. Their ability, spiderlings swarm enemies from the edge of the board. Enemies bitten by spiderlings have a chance to miss their attacks. How does that sound? It's hard to evaluate, obviously. I mean, we don't know what the actual numbers are on mm-hmm. it. Um, it's a little. It might be a little bit hard to find room for this. I mean, everyone's going to try it out. It feels kind of hard for just some like one-off three-of alliance to fit in how builds are built currently. You know, typically you're going to want to run like a core, like full six of or something that's like adjacent to other things. But these insects might be a little hard to pair off with each other. I I I have a question before we move on. Uh, Is a bug the same as an insect? Is it literally a synonym or is there a slight difference? I believe uh, when you go into the scientific term, a bug in scientific nomenclature is actually a subcategory of insect. But when, uh, when we're talking colloquially, we actually refer to an insect as a category within bug, and we see, refer to now, bug as something that's just kind of some creepy now crawly. I'm, like. I'm very interested to know what the difference between an insect and a bug is then. Wow. What segment of insects are not bugs? Hmm. That's going to keep me up at night. Zeno, what are your thoughts on insects? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the, on the insect versus bug thing, I got nothing. Uh, I'm kind of <laughs> curious. Uh, I mean, they already have, um, I think they already have an insect assassin here with Nyx, so uh, no spoilers on that. But uh, that, that they also have Sand King in there, so that would obviously be the, like the same fit if they're changing him from beast to insect. So I wonder if they're also changing him uh, for his other tag. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. anywhere else in all of these yeah. uh, patch things, but that would be a little weird to have like two things with the exact same tag. But uh, I don't know. It does seem like kind of a strange thing, like... To me, I also wonder, like, are, are like the spiderlings like attackable? Or are they just like a weird, like one hit debuff, or how they mm. actually function? But uh, I don't know. I don't know how excited I get over the uh, the insect <laughs> slash bug. It, I mean, it doesn't alliance. say the spiderlings do damage, right? So I would assume that they just stay alive, and then you just get mischance debuff applied to you constantly. Yeah. And then maybe there's a duration on. I don't know. Yeah, sounds interesting though. Uh, Weaver's been one of those. I mean, there's not that many bugs in dota so it was kind of obvious which ones they would pick if they were to go with some sort of alliance like this uh yeah one interesting thing uh real quick is that they do affect positioning a bit because they apparently spawn from the edges of the board which 
I, I mm-hmm. assume uh, is like all four sides, which means, you know, in theory, maybe your opponent's like backline might have to be a bit protected so they don't have like if their DPS has a mischance on them. So it right. could lead to some interesting positioning scenarios. I think that's especially true. Like, I think Hunters comes to mind is like things where you backline, uh, like sniper or stuff like that. Uh, and they're usually along the edges and you obviously don't want them to be missing a lot. So uh, maybe that would lead to some funky stuff. So let's go over the actual heroes themselves that are within this insect alliance. We got Weaver, who's a tier two unit. He's an insect and a hunter. Goodness. His ability is Shakuchi. Weaver shifts out of visibility, becoming untargetable, and moves through targets, dealing damage to each enemy it passes. So exactly like Shakuchi. Thus the name (laughs) Shakuchi. So a hunter, I was actually expecting if he was going to be a hunter, I would have actually thought that Geminate attack would have been the one. Because you get the double attack yeah. on top of the Hunter Alliance perk, uh, but they went with Shikuchi instead. What do you think? I saw some Reddit comment that was actually, I didn't even notice this, but basically that they the Valve kind of like did the Weaver uh, pretty well because it sort of has three of its four Dota skills. It has Geminate in that it's in Hunter, it has Shikuchi, and mm. the yeah. Insect Alliance gives it Swarm a bit, which that's is, true. you know, that's cool. So I guess Hunter is just kind of where they get Geminate from, which makes sense. I do think that it's... It's a good role in, in something like Hunter because it can provide like a nuke front line. Probably pretty similar to like Morphling. If you get it to level two, yeah. maybe you can take some damage and then Shikuchi pass them. Yeah, I think it does feel exactly like Morphling in all ways. And like, I feel like one thing that's pretty, I don't want to say underrated, but like a really good ability, generally speaking, is like anytime you can take damage, cast a spell, and then like disengage from the aggro. Yeah. Uh, kind of like Morphling does, feels like it has a lot of benefit because then you're you're soaking up some damage, but the unit doesn't actually die because nothing aggro's it after the uh, Sakuchi. So that seems like it might be good. Um, Hunter seems, I don't know, it'll be, it'll be something. Will there be an ability and or item that shows invisibility, like reveals invisibility? Will that matter? Because in theory, if you can see Shakuchi, or if you can see Weaver, while he's Shikuchi, he's, it's not like he's invulnerable. It's not like waveform, technically, right? Mm-hmm. But for all purposes, it is right now, unless there's a gem, like you said, added in the future. Just some cool things you could think about. So uh, Nyx Assassin is a tier one insect and assassin, of course. He comes with two abilities, Spike Carapace. Nyx Assassin pops spikes out of its carapace, negating and reflecting damage dealt, as well as stunning the source of the damage. So pretty much exactly like the spiked from from Dota. And Vendetta, after teleporting, so this I assume is right at the beginning of battle, Nyx Mm -hmm. deals bonus damage on his next attack and applies break to the enemy, disabling all passive effects. So I believe this is, I could be wrong, this is only the second break now uh, with, with Doom. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right, what do you guys think? Pretty cool that a tier one unit has two abilities. He seems like he could possibly be a bit OP. I mean, I'm imagining scenarios where you you put him on the front line, like yeah. level two Nyx, and that spiked carapace or whatever, just like <laughs> literally stuck. I mean, if, if it's like how it works in Dota, like everything attacks it, it seems kind of nuts maybe a little bit. And also, you know, uh, Vendetta is great. You may, uh, So how, how it works on, on teleport effects, like Templar Assassin and Nyx, it will be any time during the fight they teleport. So it can happen a couple times a fight. Um, and it seems pretty powerful, honestly, for a tier one. Yeah, seems super good. Like Spike Carapace, depending on how long it actually lasts, seems insane. Like I really wonder how they're going to balance that for uh, for such a cheap unit. But I mean, we lost our. Uh... Actually, I'm trying to remember the patch note. What was Viper turned into again? Uh, scaled Dragon. Scaled Dragon. So he's not an assassin, right? So this yep. gives you your frontline assassin, quote unquote, that actually can provide some CC, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do like that idea. Or uh, that. I do like that quite a bit. All right. And the last thing from this part one uh, is Broodmother, a tier four insect warlock, has the spin web ability. Broodmother spins a web on top of an enemy unit. Enemies in the web lose attack speed, movement speed, and cast speed. This one's really hard to gauge just because we don't know the numbers, yeah. like all of it. We don't know the AOE for the, the spin web. We don't know the mana cost, any of this stuff. But just the idea. And maybe how long would a spin web last? Because in Dota, it just lasts forever until you cast another one yeah. that takes it over so what do you guys think i have no idea i guess that's impossible <laughs> to evaluate yeah i feel like the the aoe of the web kind of has a big uh really changes how good or maybe not so good this is 
Um, I, I'm also kind of curious. I don't know. Is there anything else that affects like cast speed in the game right now that anyone can think of? Because I don't remember reading too much along those lines. But yeah, I don't actually believe so. Um, I, I'm really curious to see like how much that cast speed like slow is like to the point where it'll actually matter or if it's just one of those things where it's like a 20% decrease and you go, oh, that's funny. You know, right. it's a slower animation <laughs> or something like that. Um, but it does seem good. I don't know. Like it, it all depends on the numbers, right? So we'll, we'll see. Okay, let's move. It's nice to have another warlock, a, an insect. <laughs> it's very interesting that uh, would you have chosen any of these? these tags for these heroes if you knew the abilities i mean nick seems pretty straight yeah nick is yeah. pretty straightforward <laughs> yeah. but like hunter i, mean, I, I wouldn't have guessed weaver. hunter for weaver it's like it, it makes sense you know it makes sense now that i look at it but like the brood mother i never would have guessed warlock i don't think i don't know what i, I agree with that i agree with that but it is cool all right moving on to the second part of the update we have a legion commander with the ability Alliance, the sole Alliance champion. Will there be League of Legends haters on this one? That's the question. Champions receive all Alliance bonuses. So this is kind of your wild card hero, which is fucking awesome. You guys agree? That is amazing. Cool concept. Really, really great design. Did, so, they, did they have this in auto chess? I can't remember. No, they did not. Okay. This is uh, original to this game as far as I know. What are you saying? So for you your know? for your guys's understanding, um, does this count as all alliances like a wild card, like you said, no, or does you just get any alliance that you have currently yeah, active, right? You get okay. any alliance you have currently active. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, misinterpret that. It still seems cool. Uh, it's still, I mean, that, that feels really good, right? Like especially if you're drawing aggro, like you could get mm. you know like a you know warrior bonus, you could get scaled bonus, you could have like huge damage reduction. Um, I don't know. Like the champion alliance just seems insane, especially with. Uh, Will there ever be a second champion <laughs> who would fit as a champion? It's going to be a short mm -hmm. list, if anything. But let's talk about LC herself. So she's a tier three unit and is a human champion. Uh, of course, you have to give her a worthless alliance to go along with the OP one, it sounds like, right? <laughs> At least the least visible one in human. Uh, dual. Legion Commander targets the lowest health enemy and they are forced to attack each other. If either hero dies during the duration, the hero winning the duel gains permanent bonus damage. So this is exactly like Dota, which I am shocked by and pleased because this is what like the coolest, one of the coolest mechanics in Dota, in my opinion. And you're actually going to get to see this in, in Underlords. So very excited. Yeah, I mean, this This is actually one of my favorite uh, favorite designed units in the entire game between champion and dual and even like her tier three placement I think is perfect for how this unit wants to be I think it's phenomenal design I do think it's easy to look at this ability and think it's going to be kind of overpowered and I don't really expect this hero to be super hyper competitive um, the biggest thing is like being able to be like the seventh warrior or the seventh knight mm -hmm. or whatever it's like you you want like the value of completing an alliance is so much more than the value of adding on like an additional one um but sometimes she might be able to fit into certain comps yeah i'm I'm really curious to see like how the aggro works with dual like if the the target range for that's basically the whole grid um and then if you're just like aggroing people from across the map that happen to have like super low hp or anything like that um but yeah, it seems like yeah, a, that's true. Like it's if, a cool if concept. If it's she, if she has to walk all the way across the board to get to, well, her or vice target. versa, if someone else is like then aggroed and pulled away yeah. from something else and has to come attack her. So right, I mean, I mean it can I balance can... itself though because you can give the enemy damage, obviously, yeah. if you lose. So it's not guaranteed. I can I can imagine some very funny scenarios where like you know I mean you know the patch is going to come out. It's a new hero. It's hype. Everyone's going to be picking it up. So like I'm imagining some scenarios where early on like turn maybe like 8 through 15 round to 8 through 15 of the game like there's just going to be like one person with legion commander and like i can kind of position my board against that and just like hope to get like steal some free yeah. damage on a unit that wins a duel like <laughs> that actually sounds pretty funny yeah especially if you're aggroing like uh backline ranged units then you're like walking through like the whole front line like trying to to melee duel this you know backline uh unit i don't know it seems well whatever i mean we'll <laughs> find out so I'm yeah, curious to see how that'll play out. Now, what do you think of adding? I know this is <laughs> theory crafting, whatever. 
adding a second skill of when Dragon Alliance is activated for her. Sure. Uh, that would be actually odds or something. That would yeah. be super cool. I'm all for that. I think that'd be or really fun. Actually, any of those abilities, press the attack and the uh, the passive, or actually all of them could be really good in this game. So yeah. I was thinking the passive would probably make the most sense because uh, I mean the dragons unlock skill. passives yeah. basically. That's true. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, we have a new alliance called the Brutes. We have Axe, Life Stealer, Magnus, Treant Protector, and Doom. And it looks like, okay, these are actually accurate, these pictures. So this is a, it only takes two to activate and you can have two levels of it. So the other ones so far we've seen have only been uh, one level, I believe. Uh, so whenever a brute attacks an enemy, they deal additional damage and apply a damage debuff. Brutes prefer to attack enemies that do not have the debuff. Can somebody, ex I, I have an idea of what this means. Can somebody explain it so I can see if it aligns with what I'm thinking? Uh, well, the biggest thing is we don't know whether it's uh, I either the damage or the debuff. We don't know if that's flat or percentage based because it doesn't mm -hmm. say. But yeah, it's just whenever the brute attacks an enemy, uh, it's just an additional bit of damage. Uh, we don't know for sure. It's a little unclear whether it's when that just applies the debuff um, or whether all of their attacks do damage. But I think you, you assume that it's just the applying of the debuff that deals extra damage and it'll kind of spread it around, turn to attack something else next. So this damage, so, what does damage debuff mean to you, both of you? Oh, sorry. It probably reduces the damage they okay. deal on their attacks. They That's yeah, that would be my impression. Was, that was my first impression, but then when I look at it again, typically, at least in Dota, the way they describe it is a negative damage reduction or negative damage debuff. It's not just damage debuff. Because technically, damage debuff could mean anything, right? Relating <laughs> yeah. to damage. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you're probably right. It's probably more simple. But uh, go ahead, Zeno. Yeah, I'm also curious, like, with the, the you know, uh, attack enemies that don't have the debuff preference, if, if that's, like, um, you apply it once and then shift to a new target, or it's only, like, when you kill it, then it uh, prioritizes targets without the debuff first, or how exactly that plays out just from a, a functional standpoint. Yeah, because the um, way so it's the worded, it just sounds like they attack them. everybody once before they can focus somebody. But yeah. that's no way that works that way, right? Everybody in their attack range. I don't think they'll walk to attack anybody else, but I mean, they'll they'll spin. They'll cycle. Know, like, yeah, they'll, they'll cycle through everyone <laughs> no. in their attack range. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go over some of the new heroes that are part of this alliance. So we have Lifestealer himself, a tier one unit. He's a heartless brute. And his ability is the passive feast. Life Stealer attacks damage. Sorry, Life Stealer's attacks damage enemies and heal him for percentage of his target's maximum HP. So pretty much identical to the Dota skill. Uh, this is really good against high HP targets, obviously, since it will be percentage based. Um, he's kind of like an anti tank. That's the way I look at him. And like, obviously, he's a carry in Dota as well. But anti tank is definitely one of the tags I would classify him as. Mm hmm. And yeah, he's heartless, not, which is great. Not too much to say about Life Stealer. The fact that he's heartless, heartless is super powerful, but he's also like tier one, so you're not, you know, gonna be able to use him too well in the late game. I see him as like a decent early game transitional piece. He's a good mask yeah. of madness carrier as well. True. Uh opens up heartless like pretty early as far as the alliance bonus. Um it seems like good sustain as long as and get stunned. Uh, you know, again, I'm really kind of curious to see like how much that debuff actually matters because then it's sort of like uh, you can sort of position him front line. He can stay alive against you know tankier people that either you know output damage if that's how the debuff works or or yeah. whatever. Um, I, I like I, I generally like units where it's like you really have to think about your frontline positioning, especially when it gets to late game. Like you want to get matchups that are uh, preferable. Uh, so in that sense, like if it kind of works out like that, I think that's fun. But I don't know how good it'll be late game. So, okay, we have Magnus is the final new portion, a new hero to this alliance. He is shaman a tier type. two unit, a shaman brute. Very interesting, and he has the empower ability, which is Magnus enrages an ally, granting them damage and cleave temporarily. Is cleave still like? Again, I haven't played in a few weeks, but Cleave just feels pretty worthless right now. Is that still the case? Or has somebody yeah. like figured something it's out? Still, on that? It's still the case. Well, the one thing is, like, as you know, in Dota, different Cleaves have different radiuses, so it's possible in Underlords, more, more different Cleaves will be able to hit more than two cells on the board. A but... 360 Cleave? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
but yeah, otherwise be kind of a weak concept. I kind of feel like the general motto of Underlords is like if it's if it's low damage output that's uh, like distributed damage is generally not great because then you're just feeding people mana and not killing them unless you're doing like a whole bunch of burst AOE at once. So uh, and from that aspect, if you're just like cleaving, you know, like 30 damage to like two other units, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be yeah good. I mean, it also mark. depends on how much actual damage you're giving them because then the cleave could be significant. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, this is one of those numbers things where it, it makes sense on paper, but how strong it is kind of remains to be seen because we don't even know how good the brute class or alliance is, and we know shaman's pretty underwhelming in terms in terms of the effect itself. Or is that still the case? Actually, maybe I haven't kept up with that. Is Al- is shaman well, still one of the weaker is, ones? It is still the case currently, but we don't know if that update is going to change that. I mean, if there's two alliances that easily could be changed, feel like they need to change, it's going to be shaman and primordial. So these two alliances yeah, easily true. could change. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to part three of the update. Uh, we have, I guess it's just a bunch of new heroes. Three new heroes. So Shadow Demon is a tier one heartless demon. He comes with Demonic Purge. Repeatedly purges its target, removing buffs and slowing movement and attack speed for five seconds. When Demonic Purge ends, the target is dealt damage, which in Dota is like 400 damage, so it's actually kind of significant. I'm not sure if they're actually going to keep that, obviously, but just to give those non-Dota people an idea uh sounds like a cool hero yeah heartless demon i mean these are two like super powerful alliances but again it's like it's on a tier one so it's sort of balancing itself in that way Mm -hmm. uh but this could easily be pretty powerful though yeah i mean that's the second uh tier one heartless unit that we've seen added to the game so um again that seems like an alliance that's really good that we can uh throw on early although you know minus armor like super early game uh it's good because it scales and early game you're not doing as much damage so maybe it's not super crazy but yeah uh, it seems like another good unit but demonic purge one. also seems good uh mm-hmm. again like this is one of those things where like mechanically it's just really hard to get a sense of how it functions uh in the game but um anything that removes buffs and doesn't damage seems pretty good it also for a one unit. depends on what kind of damage type for this as well right because since he's heartless you're gonna have that negative armor aura uh demonic purge in dota is magical but that doesn't mean it will be magical in underlords but i will say like for life stealer he's heartless feast is almost certainly going to be physical like it doesn't make sense yeah. so that synergizes really well depending on what the percentage is so i think life stealer could very well be like super good especially as a one cost uh for that range but we'll see okay bristleback he is a tier four brawny savage so this was the real question was brawny gone because Axe it doesn't look like... I mean, does he have three alliances? Is that what that means? I is think what most people are guessing is that Axe and Doom are going to be removed from Warrior. They're probably going to get Brute instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brawny will still... So Axe will be like a Brawny Brute, probably. Okay. Yeah, that felt like there was a, an influx or like a surplus of Warriors anywhere. War- so <laughs> yeah, there were. So, yeah, Bristleback Tier 4, Brawny Savage. He comes with Quill Spray. He sprays Quills from his back damaging nearby enemy units enemies take additional damage for each time they have been hit with the cool spray this round so it's just additively stacks at least that's how it works in in dota so pretty good yeah. especially the longer he lives yeah it's kind of like a savage buff for uh for a spell um again this is one of the things where i'm kind of curious of the physical damage um other than that uh it's it's a tier four brawny unit so it'll probably be decent i'm curious to see because i think they said like for savage they're kind of like they buffed it uh for the current patch but they're keeping it the same as before the buff if that makes any sense uh for this whole new big update i think so um i don't know i'm curious to see how the the savage plays out with all this it feels like a whole new game so like so much of this like it's hard to theory craft when it's like everything's gonna change Mm. um yeah yeah, I think Bristleback in particular actually has a lot of like build enabling opportunities for me that I see. Um, the one big thing, one thing we've never had in Underlords really is a build around physical damage comp. Um, and the potential I see here is so Bristleback, Quill Spray is physical. It's physical AoE, as you guys know. Um, and, you know, the big physical damage we have currently in the game is Beastmaster. So Bristol and Beastmaster makes a brawny pair. And then mm. maybe you can supplement that with 
four or even possibly six heartless we've got more heartless coming in, in the game now so there could be this like physical kind of build around concepts maybe splash of techies in at the very end or something like mm. that that could actually be pretty strong honestly i think a lot of people were anticipating that fall from grace is probably going to get removed is that your you guys guess as well uh possibly no idea why why do you say that well because there's going to be so many uh heartless in the game now that there's no point in having i mean i think they want to get rid of it right they wanted to get rid of a lot of these alliance or not a, i guess they're technically like the global alliance items there's only a couple in the game now um I mean, it depends on how many are in the pool itself like if you can get yeah. six heartless then i don't think you have fall from grace if there's still five then it makes sense uh mm -hmm. but we'll see remains to be seen so last here from this one this specific post sven he is an ace tier unit. He's a human. He is scaled. He is a knight. By the way, you know, before we get to this, I'm going to turn on our webcams real quick. Get back to our normal screens. No. I called this. I didn't call he was oh, yeah? an ace tier. We talked about this, him being a Maranth in the lore that it would make sense for him to be scaled. And he's a rogue knight, Dota 1, rogue knight, the knight bonus. And he's fucking human. This actually makes perfect sense to me, lore wise. It's really well done. Back to the game, <laughs> Pat. Oh, hold on, let me get back to this. I'm gonna. Did you just want to see like our back. very excited and interesting like reactions yeah. to that before switching back? Or? You know what? I've, I've learned throughout my time in esports that if you don't pat yourself on the back like, occasionally, then well, you get I hope lost you saw the, the respect uh, that that we have for you making my, that call. Yeah, Good. my face lit up. <laughs> anyway, getting back to Sven and what he does. Uh, so let's go over his actual abilities first. So he gets God Strength which is Sven enrages and gains amplified damage. So pretty much the same as with Dota. And he also has his passive cleave ability, which is just a cleave. And Ace of Knights. This is the most interesting uh, Ace ability, in my opinion. When Sven casts God Strength, all allies or all allied knights lose their knight alliance bonus and gain increased damage per knight alliance level for the remainder of the round. That is so cool. So... The, the idea that I have, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, you put Sven, you probably don't want him in front because you want abilities to go off from the enemy so that your knights actually absorb and use their, their abilities. And then God Strength goes off in the middle of the round and then your knights gain a shit ton of damage and they don't need the damage amp or the damage debuff anymore. Or the Ugh. shield. Thoughts? Nah. I don't know. I, this feels like something where I want swim to tell me what's right before i have an opinion <laughs> oh. uh, no, no, no. but no you know it's I more insist. fun yeah, if you do this. my my initial reaction <laughs> since i know for a fact i'm gonna be wrong is that this seems kind of bad um and and maybe even as like a direct counterpoint to shan what you're saying is like damage late doesn't seem super great like i don't know that you want to like delay your like uh god strength damage burst till like the latter half of a fight um Especially with something like knights, you'll have like a, you know, maybe like a DK2, a Luna, like you're dispersing a lot of damage. So um, I don't know. I really don't know how to feel about this. To me, like I don't get very excited about this ability uh, as like an ace unit. Like I feel like it's nice because it's a knight and it's scaled. Yeah. So you can have like a, a like a viper in there uh, for the dragon bonus and then the scaled bonus. Um, but I don't know. That, that's kind of my first initial reactions, I guess, as cluttered as that was. Uh, swim i think i mean How so I, I do actually effectively agree with you Zeno, that the ability is like not all that but i mean i do think at the end of the day this is a big buff for knights and the biggest thing that this comes down to is the tags the alliance tags he has three all three of them relevant tags which is pretty crazy i mean i was just talking about legion commander being kind of weak just because like She'll pick up buffs, but she won't complete things. And this could be a fourth human in Knights. This will be your sixth knight that can replace, you know, like something that's fallen off, like CK or Bat or whatever. And Scaled can link with Viper, who is now Scaled, linking with Dragonite. It's just like all three of these alliances hit, and that's huge. The one thing about Sven that I'll point out is like Knights are just a classic roll value build. They're going to stay at eight and roll it down. So your odds of hitting this ace are going to yeah. be pretty low. It's, it's kind of going to make Knights a, a sort of a bit more RNG game gameplay like people are going to be tempted to level to nine on like 25 to try to hit their sven but you kind of have to stay at it and roll and hope you get sven on that one percent unless i mean we don't know what's changed maybe the probabilities are changed a bit but that's how you have to play it 
No, that's a really good point. Uh, and I agree with you completely, like subbing out of a Chaos Knight or Batrider. Like a lot of times if you don't hit those, like they're just kind of, I don't know, they're, they're sort of like the garbage knights that you would rather have something else in or you sort of like, yeah, maybe I can go for knights this game. But uh, yeah, I do like it in that. And as you said, like the tags are are amazing across the board. So yeah. And we, we, I mean, Suns fan was mentioning rightfully so that human tag is kind of one of the, if not weaker, at least like, eh, you're not excited about it alliances. But I mean, the knights, like you have the humans, you can turn it into heartless if you have fall from grace. Like it's actually hitting value here. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very, very cool unit. I'm, I'm happy personally. The cleave is kind of whatever. We, <laughs> we've talked about cleave already. Don't need to <laughs> harp on that anymore. All right. And then the final update for this. Oh, no. There's, it's two more yeah there's two more never mind second to last one uh part four new heroes and jail so first let's go over io he is a tier three unit primordial and druid so druid is one of those i, I remember reading some comments people asking kind of like the brawny is druid dead what happened with druid well you got fucking io now a fifth druid you have two abilities relocate and tether so relocate Io will teleport away to revive a dead hero. Io and the hero return with full HP and are purged of negative effects. That sounds fucking amazing. And the other one is Tether. Io tethers to the nearest allied unit and pulls itself towards it. Io and the tethered unit gain attack speed and damage reduction. The tether will break if they move far apart. So the question I have is, are these, like, I'm more interested in what the mana cost and cooldowns of these are because... Yeah. Are you casting these both at the same time? Is Tether a, considered mm -hmm. a passive now? Like, I, I don't understand. But it's cool. Yeah. Uh, also, like, specifically the cooldowns on the, the dead hero uh, when it's revived. I wonder <laughs> yeah. if they are they say the same, if they're refreshed or how that works. Because that, that seems like a it could either be really good or otherwise, um, you know, I, I really... That's the mechanic I wonder about. Like, how do they choose the dead hero? Yeah. Uh, is it just by tier or... or uh, order of death or whatever and then you know again as you said the mana costs and then how good io is like just standalone because like it's sort of like this placeholder right where it's like okay here's a unit and then eventually it'll bring bring another unit back so if if you can provide like some functional value uh between those points in time like it could be pretty good yeah, I, I assume Tether is going to like instant cast. I assume it, it'll, I don't know, I, I guess you can call that a passive, but I assume it won't have a mana cost and it'll just start the fight with it, um, which would be kind of cool. I don't see cool IO attacking, right? I think this is, that's his ability. Oh, right? Tether is his auto no attack. attack. No attack? Well, if he attacks, it's going to be negligible. Like, just think of him in Dota. He's not going to yeah. be attacking hard anyway, right? That's why I, I feel Tether as well will probably be passive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to see how they would manage his, uh, or its mana gain uh if it didn't have an attack i guess but yeah i was a very 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 strange unit in every sense imaginable i mean primordial druid are two weird tags to put together it doesn't really fit into conventional line it doesn't really hit being able to be a transitional like early game transitional druid it's like io has a late game ability it's a tier three and these are usually the units you want to be three starring but io i mean doesn't have the body that you'd want to three star everything about this hero seems very weird i don't personally expect this to be like a super competitive option but i mean who knows i think they might be reworking primordial uh because they're adding another one to the game uh as the next unit and to that so it's 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 about time that it got a rework so let's talk about Faceless Void. Another ace unit. He is a primordial assassin. So finally, assassins have their, their ace. So the actual ability he gets is Chrono Cube. Creates a blister in space-time, stunning all units caught in the cube. Faceless Void has increased movement and attack speed while in the cube. So the question is, will he fail and cube his own yes. <laughs> allies repeatedly? Because that would be disastrous. Probably. But I mean... His Ace of Assassin's ability is allied assassins have a chance to dodge attacks by jumping backward in time, fully avoiding both physical and magical damage. That sounds more like Weaver's time lapse, but either way, sounds awesome. Thoughts? This, I think it's it's cool. Um, it does seem like with with assassins, like you're so I don't want to say like reliant on crits, but it feels like you're RNGing things a little bit already. And mm. now you're sort of doubling down on that. 
which I mean, I guess like maybe it's a fun like roll the dice uh, uh, way of playing the game, anyways. And then Chrono Cube, that just seems like something that's going to make you rage playing this game, to be honest. But um, <laughs> so yeah, I when know. I when I just read this, I think I read it wrong actually. So this is essentially backtrack, right? I yeah. was thinking that because yeah. when it says jumping backward in time, I thought that l- meant literally. Okay, <laughs> that makes so it's just backtrack. Gotcha. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of similar to to Sven, I guess, where it's like you have this roll value build assassins. You stay at eight on twenty one, and you roll it down for like ten rounds straight. You might hit a void. You might not. Um, and you just kind of swap him in for something else. I mean, he's definitely powerful enough that you'll be happy to hit him. It's hard to say how derpy Chrono Cube is going to be or even how powerful Ace of Assassin is going to be. It's probably going to be about like a 25, maybe 30% dodge chance, which, I mean, it's a really big deal. Yeah. Is um is Six Assassins like a build at all right now? Um, I mean, it's not great. Like, I mean, you can win with anything, but there's... People have kind of messed around with it, but you don't, you don't really see it at high levels. I played it in a tournament and kind of lost and regretted it uh-huh. nice because like that's the other weird thing is like when you're running three assassins right like you pretty much want like you know at least two of them three starred or or whatever like you're running um some pretty good assassins anyways and then you're trying to fit this in um once you hit uh you know whatever like level nine or something um so it does seem like kind of a weird fit, at least with like the current builds. But again, who knows how that's going to change uh, once yeah. all this actually rolls out. So I've I've been on the record before saying like in last podcast, I'm not a big believer in there's a lot of six of alliances that I think are a bit overrated, um, depending on like which point in the time you're talking about. Obviously, you might have a different answer. But I think like in a lot of traditional cases, four knights has kind of been better than six, even though like a lot of players will shove six no matter what. And three assassins has been better than six, even though a lot of players just feel like they just want to complete the alliance and just go full six. But I do think that the inclusion of these two aces does mean there's legitimate reasons to go six of these alliances. Like, I'm not sure the odds on hitting it. Um, you need to see many, many different units. I, I did the math, and it, it's something like um, 400 units when you're at level eight odds with the ace pair. Um, and that... that can be very unlikely now, yeah i think not oh, not to put you guys on the spot how many how many alliances do not have ace heroes now or is this all of them <laughs> I have uh, really no idea. brawny doesn't all, have all like i them. guess there's a bunch yeah there's i mean like 70 or 80 percent of the alliances in the game don't have ace heroes 80 so percent right that seems high yeah is that true so in the current game there's 23 alliances uh we're seeing at least four more getting added in the update so we call that 27 right now there's nine uh ace tier units all representing different ones so i I guess that would be 67 percent, not 70 or 80 you're right but yeah most most units don't have alliances all right did you want to say something before we get to jail most alliances don't have Aces. Yeah, I, before I, we move on, I guess like one other thing I was wondering about is like if you're you're backtracking things uh, by dodging attacks um, and you're dodging magical damage, if like that also applies to things like stuns, um, then that would be it seems pretty dang good. Um, that'd be the only only other thing I'd throw out there, like something I'd be kind of curious to see, but it's not mentioned in the not. text, so no, probably not. Probably not. Probably just damage related, which is still yeah. really good. All right, jail. So even though Season 1 adds 12 new heroes to the roster, we've decided not to remove any beta season heroes. You might be asking yourself, won't this make it harder to rank up heroes? This is where Jail comes in. Every 24 hours, a number of heroes are removed from the pool. This system will also make sure that when creating a list of heroes to ban, that all alliances can still be completed. Not only have we found that this adds a great variance to the game from day to day, but most importantly, we didn't see any changes to the rate of heroes being ranked up. We hope that you all enjoy blah, blah. Okay. So, <laughs> first of all, this sounds really cool because it. this is just my perspective. You guys can expound on this. Uh, the whole idea of, like, solving a meta, I think, kind of just doesn't exist anymore with something like this, especially when there's so many variations you could put in, which I'm guessing they'll have a computer do because <laughs> there's a lot of different uh, combinations and whatnot. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is like a maybe a casual type player coming in and then not that need, there needs to be like a UI upgrade which I'm hoping that they announce soon because mm-hmm. that's kind of a big deal knowing what heroes are available 
from each each day. But being able to actually finish your alliances regardless of what heroes they are is the important part. So I think this is really cool. Yeah, I mean, it adds a lot more day-to-day -day variation. I mean, we're not going to see freaking whatever the current meta with like five <laughs> people going six warriors every game well i mean actually that's not even true uh things yeah. like warriors can still be pretty flexible right now so i sort of i'll have to take that back a bit um i do think like there there are certain builds that have more flex in them uh that like you don't have to hit like four different like super specific combinations of alliances to make them work um but at, at the end of the day whatever like it still adds um a, a fun mechanic to the game it changes how things are played you're not like you know there, there are certain things that they could throw in jail that would really like if they throw like necro or something in there uh you know it's just have a lot of value for a lot of different lineups then you know it, it becomes pretty interesting to see how people uh work around that or figure out how to kind of try and replace those units in creative ways so it, it's exciting i think it's exciting even from like a spectator's like i can go on and like watch like you swim play and like be like oh how do i figure out this and like for people that are able to adapt on the fly like that i'm i'm less good at that but i think it's really exciting from a spectator standpoint to to see people try and figure out this whole jail thing and then the next day it's something completely different so yeah no i mean it's cool like sunsman pointed out uh at the end of the day they're not allowing alliance tiers to be unattainable, right? And specifically, they've gone in. You can see the heroes they've added in just in this video. You know, they've added a seventh beast, a seventh knight, right? A fifth druid. They're making it so that when one of these heroes gets banned out, you can still complete it, right? And specifically, JL won't allow an alliance tier to be incomplete. So interestingly enough, there's actually a few heroes that JL can't ban, which uh, as far as we know now is legion commander and the demon hunters because right. that would mm. render those incompletable uh, uh oddly enough <clears throat> unless they make legion commander i guess exempt if they wanted to i personally think that jail is uh, a genius concept and will single-handedly save the game <laughs> not like I, I i'm honestly not even really exaggerating I, I really 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 love this concept it's easily my number one thing about this change yeah um like like also just from a general standpoint honestly like <clears throat> watching people play this game over the last like month um you can tell that there's you know and obviously they're whatever like they're rolling out all this stuff in a big update so you can kind of understand that there's like a, a lull right now and sort of how the meta is changing but um you could see a little bit of frustration <laughs> from, from people that play this game uh, as, as something they do either to make a living or, or, you know, whatever. They're investing a lot of time into it. And when when you don't have the ability to um, keep things fresh and entertain your viewers and be excited about the game, it, it, you, can, you can see the cracks starting to show a little bit. And I think Jail <laughs> is a way where they don't have to patch every week, right? Yeah. But they can still make the game fresh and exciting, so... I, I think it's great. Yeah, honestly, I mean, there's just, there's just like there's still a decent amount to talk about this. I, I mean, I think it's a really big change if you guys don't mind talking about it for like a couple more minutes, because no. I mean, it's it's just where where everything's at here. So I think the uh, the biggest thing about is at the end of the day, I think there's some people that are worried that it's going to like you have to relearn the meta every day and the shifts won't be that extreme. Right. Like for the most part when the meta is like decided like what the tiers are the jail mechanic daily might shift around a couple bit, like every day but it's not going to like it's not going to completely upheave something which is good i think it strikes a right a good balance between like not doing too much and not doing too little um but it's going to be hard to force the same exact comp like unit for unit yeah. every single game like i ended up doing the math and if you have like if you have an eight unit comp that you want to run just straight up like every day every day every game there is about a 75 percent chance that jail will stop that from happening like every single day so mm -hmm. you're going to be able to do that like twice a week you are going to have to improvise at least a minor degree not much usually it's like i'm playing knights batrider gets banned okay let's just you know wait until we get our sven for six nights and just play four nights until then right it's still you can still play the alliance part of it, totally it, it for me it puts more emphasis on some of the hero skills because obviously you'd be able to like say there's seven knights you can put six knights in every game because there's only be eight to twelve heroes that are detained every single day but knowing the skills of the heroes and how they might counter your potential opponents becomes more important than it used to be. Because before, it was just yeah. literally just alliances. 
now it's and items obviously and now it's all those two plus the abilities of the heroes like some of them might just suck ass right and you don't want to go that alliance anymore just because it has this one hero in it yeah uh which makes it much more interesting i agree yeah yeah another oh sorry Zeno, go ahead i don't know i i, I was just thinking like along the lines that um Shannon, you were saying like there there are some units that are sort of like tertiary units that you don't really care about. Like with warriors, you go six warriors. There's you know a bunch of warriors you can choose from. If it's something like oh you know uh, Tusk or, or something's in jail now, it's you don't care. If it's something like uh, like Doom uh, or or Tide, then um, all the, like those are things you see very consistently um, in in a lot of like warrior builds right now. Then then things change up. Or conversely, like things like Druids, where like Druids are super powerful, like early mid game. But if you remove like a like a Triant from the game or something like that, um, that sort of like shifts that whole alliance pretty substantially because it becomes kind of not not so. Well, great. there's also the factor of, of course, we don't know the algorithm or anything like that yet. But if let's say one day a bunch of like one cost units are in jail, yeah, exactly. Then doesn't it become more like? like more of a commodity to get those one cost or maybe roll at a different part of the game. Like it just changes mm-hmm. everything like a lot yeah. or you're buffing other alliances that you'll have higher probabilities of, of getting now. So um, it changes like so many different variables in the game, actually. Right, they ban like, all that's the, a really... What if they ban all the ace units one day? <laughs> you can't get an ace. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying that's a, really good observation i think like how that's probably going to come out the strongest is in the three costs specifically because these are the ones that you want to be rolling for three stars so you look at tier threes uh there's currently 14 tier threes in the game right now they're adding two more as far as we know so that's 16 let's say there's a day where four of them get banned out by jail suddenly it's like people are gonna be competing for three stars. It's like the three stars that are remaining just mm-hmm. become, or the tier threes that are remaining become so much more three yeah. star, but like everybody's gonna be going that build. And that's interesting. Like that that creates variance. That's cool. Uh, one more thing I should note as I bring back the end game here. Uh, this little guy here is named Ricky Ravenhook. <laughs> this is an artifact yeah. card. <laughs> yeah, a really kind bad of. one. It's the baby. Yeah, that was one of the worst cards in the game. But, is this uh, going to be like the uh, the Microsoft paperclip of, of Underlords <laughs> smocking you through everything? I'd, Ravenhook was a cool guy. As bad of a unit as he was, very cool guy indeed. All right, let's go over the last update uh, as of this podcast, of course. As we talked about, there will be a couple more. They said a few more days of previews before the actual patch comes out. Uh, so two new modes. Uh, first, let's go over the one that's where you don't have to talk about that long, but I do like this a lot. It's called Freestyle. So in this mode, you have full control of the board and you can create any scenario you can think of, use it to explore army compositions or test new hypotheses. You can then share your design with friends and the community. So the reason this is important for us, especially Zeno, is, oh and I God. guess Swim actually, just content creation, is this is essentially a like a sandbox mode, which mm-hmm. really helps like understanding what damage types there are. If a tooltip's not working or whatever, then you can just bypass it by setting up whatever combination you want. We can make a lot of cool content out of this. Love it. Yeah, and like they, they had like a test mode before, but you really couldn't force your like you could configure your own board however you want, uh, but you couldn't really force opponents. Like you could uh, you could fill like every opponent's board with the same units to try and try and test out certain things or um, what I ended up doing because we tested out a bunch of, you know, what what damage type is this? What does this thing do kind of stuff uh, for, for content is you adjust. There is a way to force like the same neutral creep round over and over again uh, through like the console. And so you're just like sitting there like trying to like force fit this thing so you can test out, you know, whatever different uh, theories and it was not not a fun experience so this is super exciting for me i really hope that in addition to this maybe not even right away but down the road like they give us some more um data to play around with um with like how the different numbers are being affected um you know with like dota 2 uh with like dota plus and stuff you get uh some pretty cool like battle analytics with you know how much damage you're taking from this or that um, how much damage you're outputting with different uh, damage types. And you kind of get that right now with some of the stuff that they have um, uh, currently built into the game. But like a little bit more detail on that, I think, would be uh, pretty nice in, in the freestyle mode. Yep. Okay. 
So the final thing we'll talk about is the duos mode. Find a partner, party up, and battle against seven other gangs. So here are the details. Team up with your partner in crime and battle against seven other gangs to be the last duo standing. So be careful. You live and die together with shared health and level. Send gold and heroes to help your teammate complete alliances and rank up their crew. For combat, teams face off in two individual battles against another duo with round damage added up from both fights. This sounds like a lot of fun, guys. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I... I mean, it's it's a very straightforward implementation right now. I think there's mm -hmm. some like cool stuff with um, how you manage the economy between the two players, uh, like with the you know the the unit sharing. I think is kind of fun. the The shared level is kind of interesting to the point where I wonder why maybe you don't just make it a shared gold pool uh, and and call it good. Um, like if you're both leveling up into the same experience pool, um, but I don't know, like either way, like just playing with another person on, on your same team, like makes it a much more fun and enjoyable experience for us casual folks. Uh, yes. So that, that seems fun. Yeah, I think the cool thing about uh, both players having their own individual gold pools is that it increases like interaction, especially in the first like 10 rounds or 15 rounds, you're kind of hitting interest points together and, you know, your partner can be like, hey, I'm two away from an X9, toss me two. And you're like, no, I can't. I'm, I'm hitting interest off that, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's that, you know, that <laughs> or how, however you want to do it. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, it's honestly something I'm really looking forward to. There's not, I think, too much like crazy strategy. We'll have to see. I think the biggest thing about duo modes is you'll probably see these builds that go for three stars a lot more often just because, you know, you're finding twice as many units. So the general strategy is like you and your point, you and your teammate want to be on two different comps that are running almost none of the same unit and yeah. you're just trying to three star what you're trying to three star. Yep, exactly. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. I think the one thing that I've been missing, and we kind of talked about this like when the game first came out, the, the first issue was every board was its independent thing. It was really just didn't feel very intuitive at all. It didn't feel like you were engaged in the game. Then they made it so that each battle actually matters. That helped a lot. But then there's nothing you can do with your friends. Like I, I played games with... Actually, I don't know if I've ever played a game with Swim. <laughs> Come to think of it. Play right, games so, with yeah, Zeno. let's play together, dude. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Uh, play with Zeno and some other friends. It just feels like you're not even in the game with them. You know, you're competing against them, but you're not really talking shit. Like there's nothing... It doesn't yeah. feel like another, any other game, you know, that you're playing with a friend with, whether it's, you're competing against them or on the same team. So this is a good change. I think the other thing, too, is like it, it enables you to play with people that maybe aren't necessarily on the same skill level, because like sometimes it sucks, right? If like, oh, you're like, oh, let's get together and play some Underlords. And one person is like dropping out eighth place and they're just sitting there feeling bad. Right. And you can't really help them because like you're you're like sort of managing their board like a little bit like, oh, maybe you should do that thing or don't go to this garbage alliance. But um, <laughs> I, I feel like it enables you to bring someone along with you that might feel less comfortable playing the game, but still wants to play with you. Like they still want to have fun. They just don't want to feel horrible and be out of the game halfway through. So I, I think from that point of view, it's. I don't know. I really like this whole concept in general. Yep. Exciting times, friends. So from this, uh, based on what they've said, they're going to have a few more days of previews. For, for me, a few means three specifically. Like literally, it just means three. It's a synonym but for three. I, honestly, no, Suns fan, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I did this thing in high school where I, I specifically <laughs> broke down every single thing that different, like a couple means two, a few means three, several means like four, maybe like yeah. 4.5. Like, I, yeah, a no, few exactly. is three to me. You that's actually me, completely fan. true. But <laughs> but we only have two more days yeah, between now Thursday. and Thursday. So, yeah. uh I don't know. It seems like you guys might be disappointed might. on that. that I mean, I'm going to be enraged if it comes out on Thursday after they said a few. A few is Maybe not Maybe they'll release days. a preview for the patch right before the patch. It's Thursday's oh, three days from now, guys. It's Monday. Yeah, but if there's yeah. a preview so you have Tuesday on the third and Wednesday day. for two preview days and the Thursday or the Oh, release, I, I right? see. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it is Friday. Maybe it is next week. Maybe we're all just screwed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. So what are we expecting... Uh, in the next few days then 
UI, your I voice. think. Oh, Zeno, your mic just reverted yeah. back to your webcam again. What? Last Zeno. Oh, God. Incredible. Oh, he's, he's like at 8 bit. <laughs> God, how's that even possible? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> webcam just overrides everything. Hello? Yeah, I'm good. good now. <laughs> I, I was so excited about the upcoming previews that I, I pulled the cord right out of my normal link. So, so let me uh, make there you go. a couple very non-bold predictions on what's going to be uh, previewed here. I think new UI. People have been begging for that. I think that is guaranteed to come out. The one that's even more guaranteed, of course, is more information on whatever their monetization model is going to be, hmm. which is probably going to be the final day. And then the third thing is the underlords themselves uh that might just be the next yeah. three days i don't know i think the underlords like that that seems like something they want to save for like release day to like get people hyped for something new on on the day of the patch uh yeah something like a battle pass i think would be interesting i also think it'd be interesting if they like maybe addressed specifically um i don't play on mobile at all i don't know if either of you guys do but i know like every once in a while you'll hear things about you know, performance and, and mobile feeling pretty neglected and they're not really paying that much attention to it. I have no idea how true that is, but maybe some mobile specific um, update notes uh, might be another thing we might see pop up. Yeah, I only use mobile in dire circumstances. And toilet. So, yep, yeah. pretty much. Swim, any predictions? No, I mean, what, what you said sounds like a pretty pretty good thing. I don't know, man. And you, you guys are saying all the underlords, like, screw underlords, dude. It's all about jail and duos. Like, these two things will make the game. It won't even be the same game. Underlords, hey, who cares? I can take it or leave it. <laughs> that could be Is true. Is there any like, anything out there that you were kind of, like, hoping to see that we haven't seen yet? Um, like, maybe you're, like, worried, oh, I really wanted this thing, but it's not going to show up in the game. Centaur. <sighs> Rubik. Centaur Pango. and Rubik, so. Pango, Heroes sorry, Pango. Specifically. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I need a Rubik. I mean, I mean, I'm still gonna go with like uh, some sort of like terrain modification, like either like shuffling the board around or like making no, like a no, difficult you got, you terrain. Got the Viper's new skill is terrain modifications. You know, you got your wish. Ah, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not exactly what I was thinking of when I was imagining this in my head. So uh, that, that, that's what I'm gonna throw out there. But whatever, like it's gonna be a huge freaking update. I'm excited. It's gonna be great. Broodmother webs. <laughs> actually that, no that's it in all honesty that is like the closest thing so i will i will how about that. this that's... how about halloween themed boards seasonal boards halloween then we get thanksgiving oh, we got christmas they gotta they gotta throw something out there like that i mean that's how they're gonna make the money board. So. Did they you know, know what they're gonna do, do? thanksgiving event the, for christmas they're gonna put the santa cap on roshan you know the the creep that no one ever actually sees. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Christmas update. <laughs> oh man, you could have like a snowy board with like little footprints running around everywhere and clear between yeah, every round. That'd be great. Sure. Why not? Okay. Well, that Make is the money, end Valve. of this podcast. Uh, the next one will be post patch. So it might be, if it's this week, it'll be the end of the week, essentially. I think we probably yeah. want to be less over than the... over a month between uh, yeah, podcast episodes. Crazy. So, do you guys want to give it like a day after the patch to do a podcast just to give people some time? I, I'm an idiot, play? so I'm going to need some time to figure out what the heck's going on. I can't just ask Swim to, to solve everything for me. So, uh, yeah. But he likes doing yeah. that. He likes being you know a know it all. Man, I'm easy. Yeah. I know. You're like, super easy. Just call me, call me up anytime and I'll, you know, I'll, 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 I'm always around. I don't have a life. Yep. You're basically like a mini me. Um, and i don't mean that as a compliment <laughs> i'm self-deprecating to the core so all right anyway thanks for watching thanks for listening guys of course remember this is available on all the audio apps that you listen to so have a great one until next time suns fans swim and xeno signing out goodbye